So today we're gonna to go through and we're gonna make a nice belt. It's gonna be what we consider our standard belt, which means it doesn't have any stitching or any adornments. It's gonna be made out of a very nice leather called Old War Harness from a tannery in St. Louis, Missouri. I've already pulled out the side of the leather we're going to use today. It is this. Oh my goodness. This is harness leather. And again, this is called Old World Harness from the Herman Note Tannery, St. Louis. Um, it's popularized by all the different. Uh, one of the characteristics of it is that it's full of leather, it's full of waxes and oils and things like that. It is really good in outdoor environments, really good, it handles moisture very well. It makes a beautiful rustic looking belt. You can see some that looks like there. All these scratches and all these uh, these bends and nicks, these are all from the animal. This was, you can tell, was a pretty big steer. Um, and you can see bug bites and scratches from the different bob wire and things like that. For us, that all gives, for me at least, this makes the belt more beautiful. It gives a lot of character. So you can see I've already cut a straight edge on this one. So because we've cut a straight edge on it, it's pretty much ready to be processed and cut into strips. For that, I'm gonna grab another tool, and that tool is called a strap cutter. A strap cutter is a pretty simple tool. It basically has a sliding rule on one end, on one side, and then a handle on the other. And it allows me to adjust for the size of the strap I want. Uh, one and a half inch straps are pretty much your standard size for a casual belt. One of the tricks I've learned over the years doing this is like, if, is if I kind of take off a little corner of the leather here, it makes it easier to get the strap cut. Yeah, so we're gonna we have three straps here, but we're gonna make just gonna focus on one at a time. Um, usually, when I'm doing big runs of belts, we'll do these in batches. But for now, we're just gonna do one. So when you're making a belt like this, <clears throat> oftentimes the leather may be too thick or too thin, not too thin, but too thick, and we'll want to uh, split it down to a, a lighter weight. Here at Old Leather Goods, we prefer the thicker uh, belt weights. We think they hold up longer, they feel good on the body, they offer more support, uh, for, and for a number of reasons, they're just better in our opinion. So we're not gonna worry about, you know, uh, thinning these belts down at all. What we are gonna do is we're going to trim down one edge, and that will be our buckle end. So on the buckle end, we're gonna turn it over to the back side, mark, it's kind of where the fold of leather is gonna be. We're gonna give ourselves a little room just for, uh, in case there's a little bit of a mistake with how we sky it down. We'll mark it a little bit. And so now what we're gonna do, while the rest of the belt's gonna be left full thickness, from this point on, we're gonna thin it down just a little bit. You can see in my template here that we make, um, this is where the, the, the leather's gonna fold over a little bit, right? And that fold is what's gonna hold on the, the buckle. So we'll go over to our, uh, our, our skyver, and we will split that down just real fast. So now with that, with that idea, we just pulled it against the blade, it stripped off that bit of leather right there. So you can see it's pretty thick. There you go. Now by doing that, when we fold this over, it's not gonna be too bulky. It'll still be thick and heavy, but it's not gonna be too bulky on the belt, buckle end. So, neat little thing there. Really old tool, works like a charm. We'll mark where we want our holes to be. Where the bucket tongue, buckle tongue is gonna go. Hole, hole. And line up our tool. It doesn't have to be perfect, but we do want to try to make it a little as symmetrical as possible. Right. And then we're going to trim off the end of that. Let's see, so we can do it. One, two, there we go. That's what we do. So that just trims that off, just like a nice, perfect circle. Good to go. All right, so the next thing we want to do is we want to measure out how long we want the belt to be. So in this case, I think we're going to make this a 36, 37 inch long belt. To do that, we're going to measure from this point here. We can actually put the buckle on the belt. You know, that's going to end up about right there. We can measure from that edge all the way down to where we want. We're going to measure down 36 inches. 36 inches here. And we're gonna give this gentleman a little more space. We're gonna make it 36 and a half, just for good measure. Hopefully that fits him perfectly. 
And then again, we have, I make these uh, templates to make some, my life here in the workshop a bit easier. Uh, it has all my common measurements in it, the measurements I use for all my belts. Uh, it also makes it so that it uh, doesn't matter if you order a belt for me today or tomorrow, the belt's always gonna fit the same. So that's why templates are really important. We do sell these also, which is kind of cool. One, two, three, we put seven holes in the belts. Four, five, six, seven. The important thing is this tells us is where we're going to uh, trim off the end of the belt. So just like we did on the, um, the buckle end, we're going to do the same thing on the point end of the belt with another tool. It's very similar. You'll see it has uh, the shape we want in it. We're going to line that up as perfect as possible. So it's a symmetrical point. And we're going to use our big maul. This is a I think a 64 ounce maul. We're just gonna give it a nice good back. There you go. Perfect. And there's your uh, two ends of the belt. So now we have the strap cut. It's trimmed out the way we need it. Now all we have to do is finish it off the way uh, the customer likes. So we got a couple options now. How we want to finish it off? Uh, certainly we're gonna put our, our maker's mark on it, so they always know who made the belt. Uh, that'll be down here on this end. Um, we'll do that at the press over in the uh, on the other side of the workshop. And then we wanted to finish the edges off. Right now they have these 90 degree edges. We want to knock those 90 degrees off so it has more of a kind of a rounded over feel, which makes it feel better in the hand. It also will make the belt wear a bit better over time. And then we have the option to leave the edges raw like they are now, which certainly would look okay. Or we can burnish them and dye them. Uh, I think in this case, we're gonna go ahead and burnish and dye them just to uh, give it a little more polished look. Even though it's a rustic type belt, we can, um, we can still make it look a little more polished. Anytime we use any of our, um, you know, sharp edged items before you start cutting anything, it's always a good idea to strop them a little bit. And to strop this edge beveler, I just have this piece of leather with jeweler's rouge, rouge rubbed on it. I'm just going to rub it over the edge of the, the strop a few times to polish the edge a little bit. And that should make um, the cutting go much, much smoother. Let's give it a shot and see how it works. Let's start on the back side first. And we'll make a little leather spaghetti here. The trick is if you can manage this leather work to do this in one pass. So now we have the belt, the edges are all burnished up, they look good. Um, now the question is, do we want to change the color of the edges? In this case, I think, uh, especially because we're doing a video, we might as well turn the color, uh, let's do like a nice dark brown. And uh, I have my own way of doing this. Um, every leather worker and uh, master craftsman has their own way of burnishing and things like this. This is just my method, you see. So I'm taking um, leather dye and apply it. Because this leather has so much, so many waxes and oils in it, it doesn't soak in very easily. Now I'm going to take my canvas here and rub it off very quickly, but it's enough to give it a nice, nice edge. And also the moisture in the uh, dye allows me to do one more burnish on it. All right, so these edges are done. Edges are burnished; they look good. It just finishes it off, finishes off a little bit. The next thing we're gonna figure out is, okay, do we want to uh, stitch this up? Do we wanna give it a little bit of uh, pizzazz by adding a nice stitch line around it? I think we're gonna do that. Uh, it's not required. Um, these belts are one single layer of leather. We're not actually stitching anything together. We're just stitching it to give it dec to, to, as, a, as a decorative touch. Uh, it looks nice. Uh, but the good thing about these belts, they can't crack. They won't separate, they won't delaminate because it's just solid leather all the way through. And you can see that's about a quarter inch uh, thick there. Uh, but it's going to be very comfortable. It's going to adjust and mold to the wearer's body and they'll have this belt for many years to come. But for now, let's, um, let's get a nice decorative stitch.
and come down on it with about four tons of pressure. Give it a couple pulls. And then take it off. There is a logo. There's the brand in it, which is now permanent. So uh, I think this turned out great. This old war harness turned to be a, actually turned out to be a, a really great leather to use for uh, for belts. It's actually beautiful. Um, had a lot of fun making this one, and I think we'll make a lot more. Um, thanks for joining me. Uh, if you like to check out more of these videos, check out my Instagram for a lot of the behind the scenes work I do here in the workshop. Uh, subscribe here on YouTube. One of these buttons here on the side. I'm not sure which way it will be. Um, and then also uh, check out OdinOtherGoods.com for products I sell, the tips I sell, and things like that. And um, we'll see you next time. Thanks.